Hello everyone and welcome back to our history of the Jeebus dynasty, where last time we watched the warlike career of the young Queen Lithium of Sicily as she fought to expand her empire, taking Sicily and places in North Africa under her control, but then fighting a massive war to keep those lands as well as a failed attempt at invading the papacy. For now though, at 45, Queen Lithium had regained peace in her land, but desperately sought to continue her expansion. At first, her realm needed a short respite to rebuild troop numbers, and so we continue the story today in 1175. One of her first steps to improving the realm was to empower a Sicilian parliament, where the three estates would come together to advise the ruler. This would boost the development growth throughout Sicilian lands. The new seat of parliament would be in Palermo. From then on, Sicily was known as Trinacria, and Queen Lithium was known as the Lawgiver. In 1177, a group representing the people of Tobruk claimed they did not have to pay tax. In retaliation, Lithium imprisoned the ringleader and then crushed his rabble. In 1177, Lithium's second son Hardy came of age, charismatic negotiator. He was generous, calm and vengeful. With two of age sons, Lithium felt much happier with the safety of her line. Seeking more alliances, Hardy was betrothed to Ermengard of Anjou. Shortly after the betrothal was finalised, Hardy was granted the Duchy of Sardinia. For long, however, Lithium was dragged into another war her new ally in Valois was defending against an attack. Lithium's men were quickly raised and dispatched. Arriving in October of 1178, Lithium's forces engaged the enemy at the Battle of Montreal. Saw a dramatic victory there before crossing the country into Beaumont. Second victory left Lithium's allies in a much better position. In December 1179, Lithium was gifted a box from Duchess Subia. The box appeared to be poisoned and Lithium fell ill. However, by January 1180, the war in Valois was won. Lithium once again proving her ability to command armies. Wanting to drum up support for a potential holy war against the neighbouring Sultanate, Lithium embarked on a pilgrimage to the Vatican in February 1180. Journey was not very far from her home town of Palermo and in 1180 Lithium arrived at the Vatican. Returning from the journey in September, Lithium had become known as a paragon of virtue. Upon returning, Lithium initiated the High Partition succession, further stabilising her realm. Before Lithium could declare the Holy War, she finally fell ill, dying in her sleep thanks to the poison. Her place, King Muz, ascended to the throne. Not a genius like his mother, he was nonetheless just patient and generous. Lithium died exalted among men and a paragon of virtue, having fought in seven wars. The young King Muz got off to a difficult start to his reign. 25, he was not yet married, still betrothed to a princess of Navarra. His brother, King Hardy, had inherited the kingdom of 
Sardinia and Corsica, but only kept his two counties. It's more his genius younger brother Wish was given this county of Messina, one of the major counties of Sicily. Without his mother's fame or known piety, Muz was faced with a difficult start in securing his reign. Knowing he would need the Pope's backing for his future conquests, young Muz focused his efforts on theology. Wanting to strike before his brother Hardy could regain his strength, Muz declared war on his much weaker younger brother. It would be at this time that the Jebus dynasty was known for long life, producing many octogenarians henceforth. During this early fighting, Muz's vassals played their hand, forcing him to lower the crown authority or face an all-out rebellion. Muz decided to give in to their demands. However, shortly after, on 5th of January 1182, Muz won the war against his brother Hardy. 6th of October 1182, Muz married his betrothed Catalina. In 1183, a daughter was born to King Muz, named after her grandmother, Princess Lithium, was now the heir to the realm. The Jebus dynasty was now becoming well known throughout Europe. And wanting to retrace his mother's footsteps, Krisky set off for the Vatican. The journey grained Muz a great deal of notoriety from the Pope, and he returned a pilgrim. February 1186. Muz once more journeyed to the Vatican, and this time for a grand tournament hosted by the new Pope Eugenius III. During this time, Muz met a knight and realised that she was a woman. Taking after his mother, he recruited the woman as a knight in his army. The first event was the duel. King Muz won the first bout of the duel defeating his Chancellor Count Rosselin. His personal champion Riccardo also qualified. Second round also went to King Muz, and Muz's new light knight Linda defeated Riccardo. However, in the end, Linda emerged victorious, Muz being defeated in the final. Next was the melee contest, two teams facing off. Unfortunately, King Muzz's team lost the melee. Next stop began the wrestling. Muzz won the first round of this over Alberto Azzo, Duke of Bar. Riccardo also won his first round. And then they went into the semi-finals. However, Muzz was knocked out in the semi-final, as was Riccardo. In the end, the low-born Hirove proved victorious. Finally began the archery contest. And it was in the archery contest that Muzz was declared the winner. So his prize, Muzz was gifted a urn. And so the tournament was brought to an end. And Muzz could return home with greater fame than ever. On his way back, Muz found news that his father, the Count of Cataland, had died. Hardy was now the Count. However, Muz did inherit a claim on the Kingdom of Aragon. Happy his realm was secured for the time being, Muz began his expansion, starting with pushing Duke Theodric's claims on the Sulamid Emirate to the south. 1188, dire news reached the court. A new leader of the Mongols had risen in the steppes. Word now spread of Kagan riders, unable to be killed, marching from the east. 
However, before the war could end, Muzz's claimant died, and so the war petered out. Instead, in 1189, Muzz declared war once again, this time with the hopes of putting Duke Adamar on the throne. In the same year, a son Mace was born, the young child Quick. The first battle of the war was fought in Citra and won by Muzz's forces. Second battle at Nakil saw off the rest of the enemy, leaving Jebus's forces clear to march on the capital. By December 1190, the last castle had fallen and Muz was able to declare victory, finally uniting his lands in central North Africa. Next, Muz turned his attention to his claim on the Kingdom of Aragon, declaring war there and calling his ally the King of Navarra in to support his claim against his uncle. Immediately going on the attack, Muz's forces landed in Barcelona and captured it by May of 1192. Muz's forces then caught the enemy landing at Amposta and attacked them before they could recover. Fighting the survivors of the first battle on the mountains of Casilete, Muz's forces were victorious. With the King of Aragon's forces in disarray and his capital captured, the war was forced to an end. Muz became the King of Aragon and Trinecchia. It was at this time that Muz became known as a great scholar, then shifted over to focus temporarily on his family. In 1194, a second son was born, and at his wife's urging, the son was named Vela after his grandfather. Days later, Muz received a declaration of war from the adventurer Count Giacomo for a claim on the county of Ravensburg. This county had, surprisingly, fallen into the control of King Muz. The war quickly escalated as Navarra joined Muz's side and Lotharingia joined the enemy side. A major battle was drawn at Alpsi, just outside Ravensburg. The battle was a staggering victory for the Jeebus line, with 25,000 men across both sides taking part. Jeebus's men killed three times as many as they lost. It was around this time that Muz began to be known by a new nickname of Muz the Good, known far and wide for his generosity and just nature. After two battles outside Osborg, the war was decided. Jeebus dynasty's lands in the Holy Roman Empire were once again secured. Next, Muz recreated the Kingdom of Sardinia at Corsica, granting him a claim on the Duchy of Corsica itself. Currently owned by the embattled Holy Roman Empire, Muz pushed his fortunes to try and claim this land. Muz's firstborn Lithium was betrothed to the, the Prince of Castile, securing yet another alliance. Third son, Skyline, was born in 1196. The war was won by 1199, and Duchy of Corsica entered Muz's realm. And next, as part of his scheme, Muz turned his attentions to the islands of Majorca. Shortly after the war was declared, disaster struck. Like his great-grandfather before him, Muz fell from his horse and hit his head, becoming incapable. A massive battle was then fought at Tarragona. Combined might of Muz's allies brought victory. Lithium came of age, become known as astute intellectual, and was married off to her fiancé to secure the alliance with Castile. 
second major battle at Satijas was also fought and once again was a major victory. In 1202, Muzz's younger brother Wish died, having taken severe internal injuries during the combat on the Iberian Peninsula. This did, however, mean that Messina once again was under Muzz's direct control. Muzz turned to focus what little effort he could on strategy. Finally, in 1204, victory was declared, and Majorca fell into Muzz's control. Thus, Muzz's plan to secure the Mediterranean islands was complete. Mare Nostrum was declared, and the kingdom of Beleno Tyrrhenia was secured. And with that victory ends today's story. King Muz, now 49, had secured the Mediterranean islands, declared multiple kingdoms, but was now incapable, still on his bed following his head injury. To see what happens, we will have to wait until next time. Until then, thank you for watching, and farewell.